Meeting of the Lank Grove School Board to order, please, and we're going to start off with a moment of silence. Flag salute, please. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Roll call, please. Mr. Calabar. Here. Mr. Sharma. Here. Ms. Kanteski. Here. Mr. Jenkins. Present. Mr. Phil Jenkins. Here. Mr. Cameron Eugene. Here. Mr. Whitway. Here. Mr. Ward. Here. Ms. Whitney. Here. All right. Reading a statement of reading of statement of adequate notice, please. Notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given as follows. Posting on school bulletin boards on November 2nd, 2020. Advertising in the Burlington County Times and the Courier Post on January 30th, 2020. Sending a notice to the Burlington County Times and the Courier Post on November 2nd, 2020. And filing written notice with the clerk of Delancre Township on November 2nd, 2020. All right, I need an approval, for a motion and a second for the approval of minutes of September 9th, 2020, 530 executive meeting and October 2020 regular session meeting. Motion. Second. Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I've already gone over the, uh, the secretary's report uh, for Treasury and September 2020, and they are in agreement. I make a motion. I need a second on that. I'll second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed by Vera. Motion carries. Okay, liaison reports. Uh, nothing from Riverside High School. We're going to do that. Well, this is for the new student one, and I should ask Jen Hunter. We actually do. Uh, they, they send an email. Can you use the mic uh, just to make sure everybody can hear? So, for example, Mr. Conti, how well can you hear this? You need the microphone. That's what I mean. It's, yes. It's, 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 how about now? All right. All right. Thank you. So, the PTO did provide an update. Via, via email to me from Mrs. Wendy Flanagan. And here is their update. They said the Delanco PTO recently donated breakfast to the teachers and other staff members of both schools to welcome them back and show support for the hard work that they are all doing. The PTO is discussing another fun treat to happen soon. Also, the next PTO meeting will be virtual and will take place on November 17th. The link and the details about the meeting should be coming home by the end of the week. Uh, the district would send that through Blackboard once we receive it from the PTO. Uh, they also have a tentative date for a Chick-fil-A night of December 3rd, and there's more info to come in the future. And that concludes the PTO update. All right, so might as well use this thing. It's, it's, it's on. Thank you, Mr. Mersinger. All right, Dicer Recreation and Township Committee. Mr. Templeton, do you have anything for us, sir? Uh, yeah, COVID, whatever you can do, whatever you can say, however you can say it, get, please, please, please inform your students to wear a mask and take the precautions and do everything. Uh, we've got a wildfire going, as we've all been hearing about the last couple of weeks and so forth. It's going to get worse, it's going to get bad. The median age for people that are getting it lower and lower, it's down in the 40s, age 40, and so forth. Um, the holidays coming up, uh, there's a lot of potential for things to get really bad. So, uh, I think the number of kids I've seen wearing a mask through the summer and so far this year, I can probably count on the toes of the top. Um, wherever you can do it, really. It's a great community, it's very well. Groundhog Day again. We're back to where we were last April and May. So, uh, 
Yeah, most people have mild symptoms. Most people don't get symptoms at all. A couple of people get really sick and a few people die. And uh, the thing is uh, a lot of people get the lifelong President's message here. It has been one heck of a year with COVID, with everything that's going on, with the financial difficulties we've had here at our, you know, school board and all. You know, it, it has been totally crazy. Some of the things that expected we haven't been expect, you know, expecting. One of the good things about this is I've been working with Mrs. Karen Manugian, and because of the fact of COVID and everything, she's been working very close. And we've been working with Mr. Mersinger. And I have kept her extremely informed of what's going on. Hopefully come next year, Mrs. Karen Manugian will be president of the school board because obviously I'm not interested in doing it again. Come next month's meeting, I plan on turning it over to her and letting her run. She has handled everything. She's been involved in everything. She's up to date with everything that's going on. And I can't think of a better person to run this school board, you know, as a president as Mrs. Karen Manugian because she's so well versed on it. Next year, I'd like to just sit back and be a regular board member and relax a little bit because some of the things that have been going on craziness-wise, I mean, teacher negotiation, you know, like I say, budget, and just everything that's been happening. It's totally nutty, but I do feel the school board is in very good shape going with her, and I think it'll be very good to continue going that way. Moving on, student recognition. We have nothing. Uh, public comment on agenda items. Being as there is no public comment on agenda items, I will close that. Superintendent's report, Mr. Mercier. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Superintendent's report. A motion is requested to approve the following items. Letters A through I, and uh, I won't give any additional commentary at this time. Uh, so yes, a motion is requested for those items. Motion. Motion by Rose. Second. Second by Lynn. Questions or comments? Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to give a few comments. Uh, the first comment is that uh, you'll notice that we did revise the reopening plan for 2021 again. Uh, that revision is new as of November 4th because of some updates that we received uh, when it comes to technology. Food service, uh, we changed the schedule for, and then also some updates from the health department. So we thought that was very relevant to include that in the newest version of the plan. And then also for letter I, uh, just so everyone's aware, we are required to give a data presentation each year. And so uh, it's required by the Department of Education through their QSAC initiative, which is Quality Single Accountability Continuum. Um, so it's part of our district performance review. Uh, we are up for a review for the current year. So um, the presentation was created by me over the course of a number of weeks. And more recently, I actually uh, recorded a voiceover for the presentation so that there was more information provided. Uh, that presentation was shared in a couple of different ways. First, it's in the board packet as a PDF. Uh, it was also shared with all the recipients in Blackboard uh, as a PowerPoint and as a, um, a video. So when it comes to the presentation, just a couple of key points. Uh, number one, a lot of the data from 1920 is incomplete because of what happened during the spring with COVID-19. Uh, some of the data is non-existent because of that as well. We did not have the NJSLA test. So um, there, there are some key points, though, in that presentation uh, where it talks about different factors that we look at, different ways that we reflect on the data, and uh, moving forward, different ways that we are improving our program, such as the new math program we have for the current year. So uh, that presentation is available. Um, what we're also going to do, um, we, we also had it uh, put on the website, on the homepage, so if anybody's interested in that, 
if they go right to our homepage, delanco.com, and there is a, a list of a couple of items, the board meeting notice, the live stream link, and then also the data presentation. So it's really available to anybody who wants to look at it. If they have questions, they can always reach out to me via email and uh, jmarsinger at delanco.com. And that's a, that, that uh, concludes my comments on that. All right, any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Mersinger. Instruction and Paulus Program Committee Report. Mrs. Whitney, do you need the microphone down there? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, I'd just like to make a report on classification placements, which are confidential, and also make a motion to approve the board of trustees for the following weeks from the 25th of May to the 26th of May. And second is approved? Second. Second from Stephen. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Mm -hmm. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mrs. Whitney. Uh, Finance Committee report. Mrs. Gonteski. You need the microphone also? Uh, no, I'm pretty loud. Okay. <laughs> it's all my most of the time. Uh, I'd like to make a motion on items A through N as listed on the agenda with special notations on a few items. Item D, F, N, and partial I are all non-budgeted items. Items E, H, the other half of I, and J are budgeted items. The only question I would have before we do that is for Vicki, when you said half of I, I didn't get clarification from you on which half is budgeted versus not. Um, I forgot. I apologize for not asking you that when we were emailing. It's for two students, so. One oh, so one student and okay. A total of eighty thousand five hundred and eighty dollars, but one student is one was non budgeted for. Correct. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Make the motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Second, Cameron Jenkins. Questions or comments? Uh, I have a um, question. So budgeted means we had already anticipated the cost, and non-budgeted means it, it came up after the budget was already done? That is correct. And the problem with non-budgeted is if you got a lot of non-budgeted that show up, it puts us in the hole financially. And means we can't raise taxes to you know, compensate for that, something else has to be cut somewhere else because at the end of the year, a budget has to balance, correct, Vicki? So it puts us in a bad situation when we get the non-budgeted. Okay, I do know that um, because of our enrollment increase, because of the new development, we did have, we do have more revenue because we raised taxes five and a half percent, but even with that increase, we don't, we don't have all that we need and we still have to that's probably what's going to happen. And just because a new development or something comes online, once we set our tax rate, we do not see any increased money coming into us. Once we set our tax rate, that's where it is and that's what we have. So because of the increase of the special ed costs, and you can get me on a little rant that later, but because of that, what happens is Vicki has to turn around and take from other things to pay for that. Okay. And my other question was, the homeless tuition contract, is that, is that like a special program that we don't have? So we need to go to the other district for that, or what does that involve? What happens is when somebody becomes homeless in this town, if they move to another town, we, because they became homeless in this town, we have to pay for the other district tuition in whatever town they're from, wherever town they go to. So if they become homeless in Delango and they move to Moorestown, we have to pay for Moorestown tuition for them. And unfortunately, you know, it, it does happen over here and there. All right, any other questions? You know, I, I will say one thing, you know, and I get my little rants here about special education costs. I'm still a firm believer that the state of New Jersey should be picking up more of the costs. And due to the fact that special ed continually costs us. And what's happening is it's taking away from our children in this town. You know, I, I don't want to, you know, I want to see the children get the best help that they can get. I want to see them, you know, get everything they deserve. But there has to be another way of funding this. Anyhow, it's enough of my little rant there. Um, 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Harry, you said uh, uh, yes. Harry, did you vote on the finance? No, I, I, was, I didn't. Okay. Because I, I couldn't hear a couple of things. So, but it, to me, it's pro forma, so I, I'll vote yes. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you, thank you sir. Okay, go ahead. Okay, A through C, no. D through I, yes. J through N, no. Okay. All right. Motion carries. Thank you, Mrs. Kantaski. Operation Facilities Report, Mr. Calaguire. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Operation Facilities Report, routine maintenance activities, schools closed and coronavirus. Yard growing, rewack and completion of work orders is needed. Special project activities, prepared isolation rooms at both schools, with the furniture that needed to be moved to make the rooms work as the nurses requested. I will stop sign property after we move some trees and bushes. Use a metal stump grinder, place all the old soap dispensers in the recent bathrooms. The old ones were rusting away, causing the soap to come out brown. Filled all the holes in the wall with some of the old dispensaries prior to hanging humans. A couple six urinals at both schools. Made plexiglass shields for secretaries. Placed all filters at murder 13 filters at both schools. Ran all sinks and water fountains and flushed all toilets at both schools three to four times a day by the custodians. And prepared for school reopening. Uh, on this Monday, for the teachers and principals as needed. That's all I have. All right, thank you, sir. You make the motion. I need a second. Second. Okay. We'll give it to Marissa this time. <laughs> Questions or comments? I have a comment. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Rosinger. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to take a moment to comment on our facilities team, Tim Allen, and his team of custodians. He also has uh, one. We also have a maintenance personnel uh, on our team as well. So. But that team of individuals has done nothing short of been miraculous and amazing during this time when it comes to being at the front lines of helping to prevent COVID-19 from spreading, when it comes to cleaning and sanitizing the building, uh, and also providing all sorts of reminders around the building. I mean, the, the team has just been amazing. So I just wanted to give high praise to Tim Allen and our facilities team. All right, any more questions or comments? Else. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Caliguire. Policy Committee Report, Mr. Litwag. You're on. Yes. I would like to do what I did the last time to make the motion to end the second reading to adopt the following final policies and regulations. But if, if Vicky LaSalle would be so kind as the police secretary, uh, to read those, there would be advantageous for me. Okay, we're gonna have Vicki read them, okay? Do you need the microphone, Vicki? Okay. Okay, so, um, stress SMA alert 219, bylaw 0152, board officers, PNR 1581, domestic violence, P 2422, Health and Physical Education, 3421.13, Postnatal Accommodations, 4421.13, Postnatal Accommodations, Policy and Regulation 5330, and Administration of Medication, Policy 7243, Supervision of Construction, 8210, School Year, 8220, school day and school closings. 8462, reporting potentially missing or abused children. P, stress estimate alert 220. There are policy and 1649, Federal Families First Coronavirus COVID-19 Response Act. 2270, Religion in the Schools. 2622, Student Assessment. Policy and Regulation. 5111, eligibility of resident and non-resident students. 5200, attendance. 5320, immunization. 5610, suspension and suspension procedures. 5620, expulsion. 8320, personnel records. C, 
Sea, Strauss Esmay, Miscellaneous, 1642, Earned Sick Leave, 8600, Student Transportation, Restart and Recovery Plan, 1648, 1648.02, Remote Learning Options for Families, and 1648.03, Restart and Recovery Plan, Full-Time Remote Instruction. Thank you, Vicki. And you'll make the motion, Mr. Litwack? Yeah, I, I, I move that we adopt these and enter the second reading the following that we just went over with. All right, thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second by Marissa. Questions or comments? I have a question. Um, there's one policy that I'm very unclear on, so anytime I'm, I'm unclear or I'm not sure what I need I'm not sure on that, Vicki. What's that? Can she just abstain? You can abstain if you wish. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Opposed? And abstain. One abstain by Vera. Motion carries. All right. Thank you, Mr. Litwack. All right. Moving on. Personnel Committee Report. Mr. Jenkins. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. I'm making a motion to approve the following. A, the updated substitute list. B, the appointment of Nancy Fox as the substitute subcaller at the board approved rate of $40 per day per the non-affiliated salary guide and benefit schedule for 2020-2021. C, the appointment of James Castelli to the position of long-term substitute for English as a second language with a start date of 1 September 2020 and an end date to be determined to be paid at the board approved rate for substitute teachers. D, appointment of the end of the District New Jersey QSAC team for 2020-2021. Phil Jenkins, Marissa Karmanugian, Peggy Harper, Amanda Smith, Casey Noble, Lou Conti, Tim Allen, Victoria LaSalle, and Joseph Mersinger. And E, the appointment of the ESSA, Every Student Succeeds Act, uh, SCIP School Improvement Panel, Safety and Climate Team for the 2020-2021 school year, Allison Donnelly, Angela Caracella, Diane Tassione, Maria Zaka, Georgia Renson, Shane Lilliston, Dana Force, Casey Noble, Lou Conti, and Joseph Mersinger. I make the motion. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Gantowski. This is a roll call vote, please. Um, Mr. President. Oh, I'm sorry. Questions or comments? Uh, I would just ask that uh, maybe Mr. Mersinger for everybody's benefit can explain items D and E give a little brief explanation sure. of what the point of having those committees are. Sure. All right, thank you, Mr. Lord. So before I explain that, I do want to let everyone know that the public packet that's available on the website will be changed because it doesn't include uh, item C, James Costelli, it, it, it does need to be altered. So we will have our tech team take care of that when it comes to the public packet on the website. Uh, also, uh, as Mr. Lohr is asking, when it comes to the CUSAC team, uh, every, every year we actually go through a CUSAC review, but it depends on whether it's a full CUSAC review or a partial review. So this year is a full review. So we're putting a team together that includes a number of different stakeholders in the district uh, and based on the CUSAC requirements to review our CUSAC DPR, which is our district performance review. So basically, uh, members of my team uh, and I are going to be working on a number of different tasks in the coming weeks and having that document approved by the board in December. And then there will be, uh, the, the due date is actually December 15th, and then there will be a CUSAC meeting with the county in January where they review everything that we've done and then they give us a score. So this committee basically is a committee for reviewing the different items on, on those, those lists basically a rubric where we can earn points for different aspects of what we do as a district. Um, and, and it's for compliance. Uh, the other item for ESSA, Every Student Succeeds Act, SKIP, and Safety and Climate Team, basically uh, those are three separate things, but it's the same group of individuals that will meet to discuss them. ESSA has to do with Every Student Succeeds Act, which is funding, uh, federal funding that we've received each year. 
and we discuss different ways that we can use the funding to benefit students. The school improvement panel actually serves a pretty similar purpose where the group gets to discuss ways in which our school can improve uh, in different aspects of it, academics, uh, student behaviors, uh, student needs, you name it, and uh, staff member needs, professional development, and then the safety and climate team primarily focuses on different ways to improve the culture and the climate of the school and help prevent bullying and prevent other issues like that. So um, that, that safety and climate team uh, over the years, over the past few years, has actually been led by the Pearson School Counselor, Allison Donnelly. And uh, I, I believe Mrs. Kamenukian will remember last year we had a couple of meetings. We were on a roll and then, of course, COVID happened and we, we didn't have a chance to really focus on it at that point but we will be focusing on it more this year with, with the group here. Uh, and that concludes my brief update about that. Thank you, Mr. All right, thank you. Any other questions or comments? I have a question. How does the QSAC score impact school districts? In other words, if there's a low score, is there any consequence to having a low score? There, okay. That's a great question. Ms. Mrs. Dharma, and uh, the answer is that um, we have had scores in certain areas be low over the years, but we have not witnessed any type of consequences for that. Typically, it, it's not really a punitive system, it's more of a system to say, well, here's how you're doing in this area, for example, governance, and if we get 100%, that shows that we're following all of the requirements in that area. But if we got, let's say, 80% instead of 100, there's really no penalty for that. It's more of a way for us to reflect and improve upon it. So although the state um, definitely takes it very seriously, and so, so should our district, uh, if, if we have not ever uh, received a reduction in funding or anything similar when it comes to a QSAC score that is lower than expected. And we have had low scores at times uh, in instruction and program, due to, uh, specifically due to test scores, because that has a very significant impact on that one component. But uh, we have not seen any kind of reduction in funding or any kind of punitive measures. Although it was talked about in previous years, saying, well, we're gonna have a reduction in funding, you could lose your federal funding, etc." cetera, uh, that has not happened. So I'm, I feel like that's, that's a great thing for every district, because I, I don't foresee us or any district at this stage being uh, perfect in most areas. And what I mean by perfect is, we could get 100% in, in a typical year in a lot of the areas. This year has been very atypical, so I, I foresee, because of the atypical year, that we're not going to have 100% uh, in a lot of the areas, but we'll see what the scores come out to be, and then we'll take steps to address that after, after we get the scores. All right, thank you, Mr. Mercer. Any other questions? May I say something about that? Of course you can, Eric. Yeah, so I was going to hold it for my, what's coming up here at the Burlington County, but it's apropos now. Uh, back on the session, it's the, uh, the, the county, statewide county organization met, and one of the things that was brought up was about QSAC and the time element and, and really the, the absolute on the administration for having to press the feedback on top of, over, under, around, and through everything else they're doing. So they are aware of that, everyone's aware of that. And there was something, I, I, I have ever remembered something, postpone the SGO. Do you know anything about that, Joe? Yeah. So um, Mr. Lewack is making a great point. Uh, my organization and most professional organizations in the state are strongly opposing the use of the QSAC requirements this year, considering how atypical the year has been. Uh, so my organization has sent letters to the governor and to various individuals at the state level, and um, they have not changed their stance on it. So uh, we have a very supportive county office that will help us through the process, but at the same time, the county office is getting their marching orders from Trenton, and they're required to do it. Uh, but no matter what, uh, what I've heard from a lot of people is it just doesn't make sense to do a QSAC review right now. And the example that I gave, I was talking to Lou Conti a couple weeks ago, and I said, you know, if you're a doctor 
and, and your patient just had a heart attack and, and needs surgery, it, you're not worried about the daily checkup at that point. It, it, you're in survival mode. And so when our districts are in survival mode for the past eight months, now to say, well, we're going to check up on your compliance, uh, it is definitely, you know, in my view, just really poor timing and they, they could have changed what they were doing, but they did not. So, so Mr. Litwack was asking about SGOs. Those are student growth objectives, which uh, last year they were required, but we did not use them to evaluate teachers. This year they're required again. However, it's been very challenging for teachers to actually accumulate data that is very meaningful and, and actually accurate. Uh, I was giving an example to board members earlier saying that we have students that, let's say hypothetically, they would typically struggle in an area and in some of the assessments they're doing really well right now. Well, when they're home and they have support from their parent one-on-one -on -one doing an assessment, that's not giving us an accurate reflection of that student's abilities. So that's not helping the teachers when it comes to them developing the goals for, for the students to achieve. So it's, uh, it's been a very complex process to evaluate that type of situation with um, the, the students in reading, writing, and math. It's not impossible, but it has become very complicated because of some kids being in the building, some kids being fully virtual, some kids receive significant one-on-one -on -one support at home, some do not, and so on. So uh, hopefully that answers the question. Thank you, Mr. Mersinger. Anything else, Harry? Yeah, I just would like the board to understand that we need to be flexible on how, because I know I'm, I always try to you know, get 100% on whatever we do, and I know we aim for that, but I think this year we just need to relax radically and make sure that our administrators that is, uh, go to the and meet together. And if for, it'll be a pro forma kind of evaluation for the key staff, not to uh, further the you know, for the to handle what you probably will really be doing anyway. So uh, the stress isn't worth it. All right, thank you, Harry. All right, this is a roll call vote, please. Yeah. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Okay, Board of Education Liaison Report. Uh, Riverside. Rose, do you have anything for us? Um, yes, just to let everybody know that Riverside went back to their hybrid schedule as of Monday, the same day we started. And as of today, their elementary only, high school and middle school is still open. Elementary only is now closed until after Thanksgiving. Really? Yeah, they had a positive case, but it was isolated into the elementary, so they're keeping the high school and middle school open. Okay, and then your board meeting is tomorrow night, correct? Board meeting is tomorrow night. It um, hasn't been determined yet if they'll go Zoom or in person because our meetings are held in the elementary cafeteria. So they want to give enough time for them to clean. Um, so I don't know if it'll be in person or Zoom yet. All right. Thank you, Rose. Appreciate it. Uh, New Jersey School Board and Brunswick County School Board. Do you have anything more to add, Harry? Yeah, there was that meeting on the second, and um, some of the feedback they gave was about the virtual workshop. And um, there were some really good, I don't know if those got to it yet, but there were some really good, good programs. And um, the fact that it looks like they're going to, um, if I'm correct, three new members on the board. One of the things that they were doing, because that came up, other districts did it about you're going to have new board members who wouldn't have access to it. And so what they're doing is, is saying, and we'll, we'll have to double check it, that you can register as after it all happened as a complete group and maybe just paying the difference between because there's up to 25 people uh, that could have access to that information so 
something that was just very, you know, was timely and it was just about what was going on. And so that's something to consider. Uh, they also talked about snow days becoming virtual. Um, but they're waiting for our, the, the DOE input before they kind of move forward, like anything else, there's pros and cons. Um, and then, uh, that parents um, are concerned about how will this make up the gaps that are being created, and about parents are also concerned with social and emotional regression organizational habits that are missing, especially in specific age groups, uh, has been inundated. And this is something that, I don't know if we're doing already, but maybe it's something to look into, is covering less material between testing and physics. In other words, chunking information together in smaller units and testing and quizzing rather than what was normalized that it may not translate well in the virtual environment but those are some of the big questions that are coming from the state that parents and i still think it'd be a good opportunity to get vocational preference testing done with the kids rather than worrying about academics and then the parents are not skilled so that was what uh, came from the mayor um, the idea of patience and empathy, strength and character, um, the resiliency of children, and um, we, we have to not just go back to our old educational ways, but re-examine education, reinvent education here in Belanco, that's what everybody can have to do. And then on Friday, evening at 7 and it's 9 30 i have it's the uh, state director's meeting and that that should be the same as we want about this because it's all fun everybody's operating from moment to moment and whether there's money whether there's not money and the flow from the city of government to the state so those are all issues that are on the table it will be interesting in a future places that's it that's it all right thank you very much Harry. appreciate it all right great. thank you sir. all right township committee um the one thing about uh, township committee and also school board we do not have any election results for anything if you look at uh, the 19 or the 2018 census report it shows that there's 20 uh 4448 people in town that was in uh, 2018 this is 2020. So if you take it up, add it up to maybe 4,500, you take off 500, you know, for basically people that have kids in the household, then you take off another 500 for people that just would never be registered to vote or wouldn't vote, that leaves you about 3,500 people that would probably vote. Right now, I know for township committee, the count is at 2,500, so I know the county is still counting. Until the county finalizes, we're not, we're not going to know who won township committee, or we're not going to know who's going to be on school board. Good luck to everybody, I say, you know. We shall see what happens out of that, you know. We can just keep going. All right, moving on, old business. Uh, one thing I want to do, I want to put a special, you know, thank you to, you know, every past veteran we've had, because this is Veterans Day. I think it's an extremely important day. I just want to say thank you to every veteran. Vince, thank you for your service. I appreciate that, and I think everybody appreciates it. Thank you, Vince. And, for even, you know, future people, you know, or in the past, the people that have, you know, given up their lives to make this country the way it is. You know, I think that's extremely important. Um, we've also got, uh, Mike, you're a veteran too, I believe, aren't you, sir? Very good, Hi. appreciate it. You know, and I believe that's it. Oh, and a big shout out to Casey. She, uh, you did win in North Hanover, I believe, didn't you? Not final yet. Exactly. Not final yet, the same as the line. Well, we're all rooting for you, of course. All right, other thing, board member required training. I believe very of you have taken training. I'm not sure who else has to take training. If anyone else does, Vicki, are they all? I finished the training, I passed the test, but Vicki said they required me to type all the answers to get to the bottom of it and then say, I finished the training. So I'm going to do that. Yeah. All right, 
Very good, Vera. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Uh, new business. And Port I email for mm -hmm. Okay. Very good, Vicki. Thank you. All right. Uh, that ends uh, old business, new business. Uh, board member communication protocols. Uh, Joe, would you like to go over this a little bit? All right. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. So when it comes to communication protocols, uh, there are other boards of education throughout the county that actually have a list of protocols that they use when it comes to board members, administrators, interacting with the community, and so on and so forth. So um, what I did was I reached out to my colleagues, I spoke with the board solicitor, and uh, received some recommendations. So what I did, uh, I shared with the board via email, uh, the it, it's called the Charter of Acceptable Norms, and also there's one that's a communication protocol. And I just thought it would be beneficial for board members to consider this idea for our board. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to go in place immediately, but it's something that I think would be worthwhile for the board to go through the process over a, a couple months and say, these are the protocols that we think make sense based on our policies and based on state requirements. So um, I also just, I just wanted to hand out hard copies of the packets to the board members just so they have them here in case uh, they wanted to look at them now as well. Very good. Okay. I believe all our distributions are out. Except for this one. Except for this one. Oh, that's the one you're handing out now. Uh, we don't have to work, we don't have to act on this, but everybody can take a look at it and see what we've got. And it's just, you know, just little, you know, things. I mean, some of these are some of the uh, things that Jesse went over from New Jersey school boards and previous uh, training that we've had also. All right. Now I'd like to open it to public comment on non agenda. Sorry. I have something for new business. Oh, for new business. Go ahead, Vera. Okay, a couple of Garrison, Garrison so Architects is Garrison our. With a G, yeah, with a G, yes. Okay, so that's an architectural firm. So I'm wondering, um, does every school district have to have an architectural firm of record? Is that why we have that? I, I believe every school district has to have it as record. And if we go to do any sort of construction project or anything that we need an architect, usually we contact them. But they. They're the architect of record, but I don't believe they make any money unless they do any work for us. Is that correct, Vicki? Correct. That is correct. So, so every school district should have that legally. They need to have an architect of record. Is that right? I believe so. Okay. And also, um, how many laptops have arrived uh, that we bought with a digital divide, and how many are have, have been delivered? Have we got any? Uh, any uh, the uh, Chromebooks, have we got any that were uh, ordered from the digital divide? Have they come in yet? They did. I'm, 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 I'm bringing up the numbers right now. Joe's bringing up the numbers right now. How much? From the digital divide, we got 163. We got 163 of them from the digital divide. Yeah, so we, we, received one, we received 159, and then uh, and just, just, I believe, 90 more according to Albert as well, right? So the 90 were not part of digital divide. Not part of digital divide, they were just a, a separate budget. Budgeted. Okay. Digital divide was 159. Plus four more. Plus four, <laughs> yeah. and we're waiting for 13 more. 
Okay. Yeah, so we received a lot. So in, in an announcement that I shared with the community just recently, I, I did indicate that we do have enough Chromebooks for every child in every, any program that we have, hybrid or virtual, to have a device one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, the other thing is, um, how many of the hotspots are still left? I think you said there were 20. Have they all been taken? So uh, that's an excellent question. So Albert Panera, our our network administrator, he and I were working on that today. And so as of tomorrow, uh, the, the 13 individuals who applied for the hotspots, we're going to cross-reference the information and make sure that they're on the free and reduced list and then be distributing the hotspots starting Friday at the latest. And then by next week, I'm hoping that all of them, all 13 will be distributed. That means we would have seven remaining for anyone who is interested and, and who needs them. That's, that's happening in elementary grades, and it's happening in special education classes. It is not happening in every class for middle school, though, because of the, the makeup of the class and, and the types of lessons that they're doing. But it is happening in a majority of the classes, yes. Okay, so they're both focused on the same thing. So I'm wondering if the teachers, where you have got, gathered some information from districts like my district, have already been doing this for a month. There's some glitches that, you know, people have learned along the way. Have you gathered that information and bring it to your teachers? I speak to my colleagues almost daily about everything that's going on. Okay. So, so you know some of these districts have already been... Absolutely. And so we've gathered that. And when, it, when we were moving to the hybrid program, which actually just started on Monday, there were concerns expressed by teachers of, how are we going to do this? I mean, it is the most challenging thing I've ever seen our teachers do. And it's amazing what they're pulling off right now. I mean, it, it is, it's a miracle uh, because of the, the difficulty level. I mean, for them to have a group of children in front of them to instruct is challenging alone, let alone children in front of them, children on a screen. It's, very it's exactly, hard. so it's very it's complex. So that was expressed, concerns were expressed. Um, we actually, uh, gave teachers the opportunity prior to the, the hybrid to have collaboration time for three days to really work out some of the glitches and, and what was happening. But I, I feel like um, I do want to give a shout out to Casey Noble and Lou Conti at this time because they were definitely at the forefront of this when, uh, with understanding the teacher's concerns and knowing what was needed. So for example, uh, one of our audience members uh, had asked for a document camera saying that this is going to be uh, important for instructing students and so um, we reached out to the principal we had other teachers reach out asking for document cameras and so on so you know but uh, it, either way the, the um, it, where was I so our principals did, did a fantastic job with helping our teachers with the concerns now it doesn't mean every single issue is alleviated because we've only gone through two days of the hybrid program but no matter what, I think uh, our, our principals have done a fantastic job. All right. That is it, Vera? Yes. All right, thank you. Anything else for new business? Uh, this is Harry. I have a question. Go ahead, Harry. The, um, yeah, how are we doing with Natalie back in the building and with um, just the what, you know, keeping things clean? I spoke with a uh, a director of a special education school today and about issues that the special ed students are having and it's just the hygiene of just really the, and they have a lot of them have extra special needs so i wonder how we're we doing and did we get the MERV 13 are we putting in MERV 13 filters MERV 13 filters have already been installed in all of the hvac systems 
And when it comes to okay. cleaning and sanitizing. Okay. The reason, that's great. The reason I ask also is because um, if you're a chef and I won't be at the next meeting, but it, it said COVID, it, it said uh, MERS 12. If you look on the. Oh, uh, did it really? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So good. That, and that's why I was asking because I know I'm not going to be out ahead. The next week, the Understood. Next and we'll make sure, it, wherever it says MERV 12, it, it really is MERV 13. That's, uh, right. yeah. That's what I assumed, but I just wanted to double check that it could say that in writing. Yes. And locally, um, I, I, as far as your business, um, from what the has been said by um, the, the incoming administration, is that there's going to be more money goes into public education, so we'll see what that means because some of the funding problems that Phil points out about special education originate at the federal level and the flow through money that's supposed to go through the state at 40% is only coming through at 15%. So hopefully that, and it's a problem not to screw up in the line though, but only in the state. So um, whatever we can do in that regard, that's great. I mean, I had, I had a uh, member of the community say, well, why don't we just take in special ed students so we can make money? So there's other issues involved with that. So I'm, I'm just relaying that as you. I never heard that one before, so I'm relaying that. That would sure would be nice if more money came to the town for special ed, but we shall see. Thank you, Harry. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, nothing else for new uh, business distributions are all out here. I'd like to open this to public comment on non-agenda items. Lou? Well, this is Lou Conley, first of all, you're here to the East New York Live Split. I just want to give a shout out to the staff here for the past couple months, all the, all the teachers, the instructional assistants, just for the job that they're doing. We've been, we've been discussing tonight the tasks that they've been given, they've never been these are not going to be learning college either as an undergrad student or a grad student. You don't learn these space students even for the fact that everybody is rising to take the reason freedom of speech volumes. The amount of collaboration, teamwork, flexibility has been absolutely phenomenal and people are, are really stepping out of their comfort zone and pushing themselves to the best of the kids in tough situations. So we just want to give a shout out to both staff, both the teaching staff and the aides and both of them for the excellent job of the school. Great to hear that. Thank you very much. All right, anything else? Okay, I'd like to close this to public. Good. Um, apparently, YouTube is having an issue right now. Yeah. So people aren't able to see this right now, yeah, but they are fixing their feet. It's been like, they have everything yeah, so it's, so not, yeah. it's not ours, it's actually YouTube itself. So. Hey, Albert notified us, so what I'm going to do is once the video is ready, because it's still recording, I'm going to, I'll send it out and we'll post it onto the the front page of the website, post it where we've, we've been posting it for the past month so that everybody has access to it. Is it, is it, they just can't see us or can they still hear us? I don't think YouTube is there. Yeah, they're saying oh, YouTube, they're yeah, YouTube is down. Oh, well, it happens. It was super glitchy, like it could see you but not hear you, and then, like, then it was loading and then it said we didn't want to go. But I think that the internet just, with the weather today, because I know, my, I know Katie was having problems with her school today, I think just the internet is just doesn't like today. It's a big spike at 7 p.m. I agree. Yes. <laughs> I had internet problems all day. Yeah. Yep. Things were dropping and yeah, all day. Yep. Alrighty. So yeah, thank thank you to Amanda Smith for coming up with some uh, ideas and uh, thoughts about how we could help improve things with the hybrid program. Thank you. All right. Great. Okay. Uh, close to the public comment agenda item. Uh, executive session to discuss district goals and CSA evaluation. It is approximately 8 o'clock. I am figuring one hour worth of time to do that. So we need a motion to go into executive session. So moved. I'll second. Also, also um, if, if anyone's considering staying, I'm not going to recommend anything for approval tonight. So the only thing that would be approved when we come out is adjournment. 
Your turn is okay. So if anybody wishes to hang around, you may. But we are not going to be taking any executive action on anything except adjourning meeting after this. So we made a motion to go into executive session. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion carries. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming.